Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to semester two. My name is Mona Malik. I am a cardiologist. I would like, I'm honored to be with you. I would like to introduce to you the cardiac disease. So what is the content of our lecture? It will have an, we will have an example of case scenario and why we study cardiology, what is the importance of cardiac disease, what is the scope of cardiac disease, and what are the common symptoms in cardiology, and what we do for examination of the heart, and finally, what is the investigation. Yeah, at first, we would like to, this is an example of a common case we see every day in our clinic, in our practice. This is a, a male, 54 years old, he is driver. He was referred to our coronary care unit at one and a half a.m. And he, because of chest pain, this is chest pain was retrosternal, radiating to his left shoulder. This is occurs, uh, occurred during sleeping, and this is, was associated with cold sweating. And this is patient have two risk factors. He was a hypertensive patient and a heavy smoker. So what next? What we are going to do next, guys? Okay, we have to do an examination. And we have to look for the vital signs at first. All these vital signs are normal except for the elevated um, blood pressure. And this is patient to cardiovascular examination was normal. And this is patient was conscious. So what else? What we are going to do? What is the diagnosis? What we are going to think of what? Okay, what our differential diagnosis? Okay, we are ordered an ECG because this is patient have chest pain. This is ECG show abnormalities. This is an ST segment elevation in the anterior precordial pre leads from V1 to V6. And this is an indication. This is an indicator of anterior wall myocardial infarction. So this patient have heart attack and myocardial infarction. This is our diagnosis. We diagnose the case because of the high clinical suspicious, because this is patient is is middle age patient have heart, have uh, two risk factors driver um, hypertension patient uh, a smoker and came with us with a typical chest pain presented to us with a typical chest pain so our diagnosis was acute MI myocardial infarction STEMI ST segment elevation myocardial infarction so what we, we, we sh this is our diagnosis so what we are going to do next yeah after diagnosis, you have to treat the patient. This is the management. As a cardiologist, we have, if you have a broken thing, you have to fix it. So we send them for the coronary case lab. In our case lab, we do an, a coronary angiography. So we have, we, we have a thrombus in his coronary. We remove the thrombus using a mechanical device, a suction catheter, and we regain the blood flow again to the myocardium. So the patient, or if we don't have a case lab, we can give drugs to remove the thrombus. The patient have myocardial infarction due to occlusion of the, of the, of the blood flow to, to a part, to an area of the left ventricle due to a thrombus in the coronary artery. So we remove the, the thrombus. I want to give you a message because every minute count. Actually, not every minute, every second count. Because if you didn't salvage the muscle during the first six hours, we will have we will have a myocardial infarction, we will have a scar tissue, okay? And this is patient maybe develop a, um, a complication, okay? So every minute count. Why we talk about cardiology? Why we have introduction to cardiovascular disease? Actually, because coronary heart disease, our rank as in, in our beloved country is number 18, according to the WHO, in the preval prevalence of ischemic heart disease. We are number 18. This is our rank, according to the WHO. So ischemic heart disease contribute to, contribute to a major disease. It seems to be a major disease in our beloved country. So we have to take care of ischemic heart disease to prevent it. And we have to manage it. Okay. Yeah. Why ischemic heart disease? We have a lot of disease in our country, unfortunately. But ischemic heart disease is the killer number one in the whole world. So we have to, yeah, this is a killer number one. This is the cause of this. According to WHO, the report in 2016, uh, and this is was the report, ischemic heart disease is a killer number one. After that is a stroke. So it's very common. So if you prevent ischemic heart disease, you can decrease the mortality. And this is another map showing how heart disease is very common in Egypt. And 
اكلنا and and the global burden is increasing guys yeah yeah the cost of the cardiac disease will increase by years and expected to increase by 2030 and 2020 and 2025 it's not decreasing the cardiovascular disease will affect the economy of the whole world so if you prevent the yeah prevention is better than cure so you have to deal with the prevention of the cardiac you have to prevent the occurrence of cardiac disease either chronic heart failure ischemic heart disease even a stroke a stroke is a part of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease even it's treated by the neurologist not us okay so what are the scope of, of heart disease guys heart diseases my dear student include a lot of diseases valvular causes diseases of the blood vessels like the aortic aneurysm diseases of the coronary artery disease which is the major cause of ischemic heart disease cardiac arrhythmia heart, heart failure cardiomyopathy pericarditis these are examples of the different types of heart disease yeah but if you have a patient with heart disease what it's what the complaint what is the complaint is a cardiac symptom this is why the patient complaining of what these are this is cartoon show the common cardiac symptoms or the common complaint among, among our patients cardiac symptoms include chest pain heart failure either to left-sided heart failure symptoms or right-sided heart failure symptoms low cardiac output symptoms palpitation and hypertension and let's have a round or a tour in, among the cardiac symptoms and what are the common symptoms in cardiology chest pain what is the what the criteria of cardiac chest pain guys yeah, usually chest pain due to heart attack or ischemic heart disease usually have a pressure or heaviness in character. Usually the patient describe it as having a pressure in his chest, usually retrosternal in the center of your chest. May or may not radiate to your arm, neck, usually the left shoulder. And usually, um, yani usually it's um, increased by exercise and, uh, uh, and relieved by risk. It's not more than two minutes. This is the angina chest pain or the heart attack, but not myocardial infarction. It will persist more than ten minutes. Okay? Yeah, and because of because we have a we have a chest pain due to a lot of causes. This is the definition of typical chest pain according to the guidelines. You have you must have all the the following three criteria to be uh, to to have a typical chest pain. But yeah, these are two president, President Eisenhower and President Clinton are common example of having chest pain. Between 1955 to 2004, we have a great advance in the cardiology, in diagnosis and investigation and the lines of treatment. Cardiology is a very growing speciality in medicine and it's still growing. Yeah, but do you think these symptoms only a heart attack can be presented by chest pain? No. We have a lot of other major signs, symptoms of heart attack, but it depends on the clinical suspicions. The patient, yeah, you can you you can have a heart attack or skin cord disease, but not presented by chest pain sometimes. But commonly you will have a chest pain. These are examples, but it depends on high suspicions and the patient um, risk factors. Yeah, diagnosis in medicine mainly depend on the clinical suspicions. But do you think that all the chest pain is due to cardiac causes? or all the cardiac causes due to coronary heart disease? No. We have also non-cardiac causes of chest pain, either pulmonary, neuromuscular causes, neuromusculoskeletal, esophageal, or cardiac causes due to other, we have due to other diseases. Aortic diseases, for example, pericardial diseases. These, these, these all, this diagram show a lot of different causes of chest pain. How to differentiate? Later on in our curriculum, in, uh, in our study, you know how to differentiate between different causes of cardiac of chest pain. Don't worry, even psychological, even neurological, even, even emotional stress can cause chest pain. Even during uh, extreme emotions, you can have a chest pain. Uh, so don't worry, if you have a chest pain, it may not be serious. But you have to take it, if any, any, any patient, any, anyone complain of chest pain, you have, it, you have to exclude life-threatening condition and you have to deal with chest pain as a serious condition until prove otherwise. Another, part, another symptoms are cardiac symptoms and the very common is due to heart failure. Heart failure is due to failure to fill or eject the blood from our heart. Heart failure, we divide the symptoms from heart failure due to heart failure into, into left-sided heart failure symptoms and the right-sided heart failure symptoms. Left-sided heart failure symptoms due to usually due to um, 
uh, problems on the left side of the heart, leading to pulmonary congestion. And the pulmonary congestion will give us orthopnea, dyspnea, fatigue, cyanosis, crackles, cough, sputum, tachypnea. Yeah, what are, these are the common symptoms, but I need you to recognize this. What is dyspnea or shortness of breath? Dyspnea is unpleasant awareness of our own breathing or difficulty in breathing. Dyspnea is usually the common symptom of left sided heart failure. We have also a lot of causes, a lot of different causes of dyspnea and shortness of breath, usually due to chest causes. For example, if, uh, you, if a patient has asthma or uh, chest disease, he may complain of dyspnea. But in cardiology, this is very common, and this is also a common symptom in cardiology. So, what is orthopnea, guys? It's a type of dyspnea when um, when you have a dyspnea on laying down, and this is relieved when you take a, a sitting position. And what is the bruxisman nocturnal dyspnea? This is a type of dyspnea occur after sleeping, about two to three hours after sleeping, and usually relieved by taking the upright position. Okay, and this is okay mostly due to left-sided heart failure. This is called the heart heart. Um, this is you have to differentiate this is bruxism and nocturnal dyspnea from the asthma due to bronchial asthma. Yeah, this is like not the same. This is due to cardiac cause. Bruxism and nocturnal dyspnea. Yeah, you have to know to recognize this terminology. Yeah, but we have also symptoms due to right-sided heart failure. Right-sided heart failure causes systemic congestion, accumulation of fluid, because in, in, in the whole body, due to impairment of the uh, venous drainage, the common symptoms are shortness of breath, swelling of, your, of our legs, feet and legs, of the patient leg, swelling of the abdomen, yeah, and yeah, and we have a lot of other symptoms, but I need you to recognize these symptoms. Also, the heart can, failed to pump enough blood to different organs, especially the vital organs. These are the symptoms of low cardiac output, which include dizziness and the giddiness and the syncope and blaring of, your, of uh, vision, angina, and decrease the urinary output illegally. We have to recognize the syncope. What is syncope, guys? Syncope is a sudden and transient loss of, your, of the conscious level, of consciousness, and this is associated with spontaneous recovery. If, yeah, these are criteria must be to diagnose someone with a syncope, you must have these three criteria. You can, if the patient recovered, if uh, uh, regain his conscious level using cardioversion, this is not a syncope, okay? Syncope, you must regain, a spontaneous regain of your conscious, of the conscious level, of the patient conscious level, okay? Another common, one of the common cardinal symptoms is palpitation. And palpitation is a subjective awareness of, your, of, of heart beating. We have a lot of cases of palpitation, either psychiatric medication or abnormalities in our heart rhythm, either increase in our heart rhythm or irregularity in our heart rhythm or decrease in our heart rhythm, in our heart beats. These are examples of the palpitation in our heart, and this is the ECG, and yeah, that can be indication of serious disease or can be normal or due to clinical condition. We have to yeah, need to do our investigation. Hypertension also is a, can be symptomatic or asymptomatic. Hypertension is a silent killer, and it's very common, and unfortunately among Egyptian young people nowadays. How to diagnose hypertension? By measuring your blood pressure. Sometimes it's discovered accidentally. Sometimes a patient presented by headache or the complication of hypertension. And hypertension is one of the common complaints in cardiology. How to diagnose hypertension? We have different numbers according to the type of measurement. We have different grades. But the office measurement during your clinic, we diagnose hypertension of the systolic blood pressure more than or equal 140 millimeter mercury, or and the diastolic blood pressure is more or equal to 90 millimeter mercury. And these are the most common cardinal symptoms in cardiology. So what else? After doing taking history from your patient, if you want to reach a diagnosis, we we follow a systemic approach. After that, you have to examine the, car, the heart. Examination of the cardiology includes general examination, which includes your pulse, the pulse of the patient and the blood pressure. You have to give, a, to give comment on the rate, which is the number of the heartbeats per minute, or the rhythm, which is irregular, the regularity of the heartbeats. If the duration between each heartbeat is regular or irregular. After that, you have to measure the blood pressure, and these are the vital signs. You have to do it in, in, in any patient, not only the cardiac patient. 
we have direct method and direct method and you will take it and recognize it in the in the physiology curriculum later on after that we do a local cardiac examination actually you have to inspect to look for the chest the pericardium is the part of the chest wall covering your heart you have to look if there is abnormality in the chest wall if there is a scar indication of previous cardiac surgery if there is visible blood vessels if there is abnormality of the shape of the chest wall about the skin and you have to put your hand and feel any pulsation then you are going to listen to your heart using the scope this is the area you have to look for and this is yeah yeah we have different area to look for the the cardiac pulsation and after that you do an auscultation you're using your stethoscope you will listen actually to normal heart sounds s1 and s2 s1 is due to the closure of the mitral and tricuspid valve and s2 is due to the closure of the aortic and pulmonic valve between s1 and s2 is this is a systole between s2 and the next s1 is a diastole and you, this is no this is a normal heart sound you can't hear your normal heart sound you except if you are very sin if you have a sin and you have a very sin patient you're using your stethoscope okay but this is the only heart sounds no if we have abnormalities in the heart we listen to the heart sound due abnormality due to turbulence of the blood flow if there is a stenosis or regurgitation of the valve if there is a volume overload or pressure overload depending on the condition you will listen to abnormal heart sound in the story or diastole according to the condition of the patient and we will recognize it in our curriculum later on but what is murmur guys murmur is an abnormal sound and this is a latin word we listen it to with with your stethoscope this is due to turbulence of the blood flow usually the blood flow in our heart is laminar flow we have no sound the closure of the valve uh, is the produce the normal heart sound s1 and s2 but if there is abnormality in our valves like um, stenosis or regurgitation abnormality in the opening or closure the interplans of the blood flow this is can cause murmur okay after that if you listen you you listen to your patient and take history from your patient and examine your patient and look carefully for signs of heart disease you have to send them for investigation we have a lot of investigation nowadays in cardiac in, uh, in, in cardiology but you have to choose according to the patient according to the examination according to the history of the patient this is your mission as physician to choose certain like certain investigation that what that can help you in diagnosis and this in this is our examples of the cardiac investigation the ecg is, is a very important part and you can recognize a lot of diseases using a cardiac ecg and the exercise ecg this is ecg during exercise sometimes the ecg the previous ecg was during rest this is during exercise okay we detect the ecg we 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 record the ecg of the patient during exercise we have also cardiac imaging and have a lot of modalities like chest x-ray and echocardiography which is the ultrasound of the heart we can recognize the shape of the chamfers if there is abnormality of the valve the blood flow the contractility of the heart we have a lot of measurement actually we can have a lot of measurement like the ejection fraction from the echocardiography we still have cardiac imaging like the cut scan ct scan or magnetic resonant imaging these new modalities and they can add a lot in our diagnosis and also the tissue perfusion imaging using nuclear isotopes to assess the viability of the cardiac muscle if we have a scar tissue or not yeah and finally coronary angiography we have diagnostic coronary angiography and we have therapeutic coronary angiography and that is for all for today thank you and um, hope to see you in the next few years thank you